is FD. FD is the opening FD. stage. So we got a flat stage versus the ninja. All right. Well, we were talking about how how will the micro spacing interact. This is a stage where that's going to be paramount more than anything else. Now, another po component to this matchup, Greninja is frames at it. And the fact that he can really pressure Peach. The question is, you know, but the same could be said for Peach on Greninja. Greninja, not that character with the, the greatest out of shield option. Not at all. And Peach would really know for a shield pressure. But one thing I also want to harp on is uh, the second like Peach caps or Greninja on the ground, he's eating a lot, a lot of damage. <laughs> I see right there, um, he, that was one interaction with uh, Player 4 took him from like 0 to 40. So, Lord have mercy. If he gets caught with even like a back or a nair down to something like that, Greninja Disadvantage is not even like um, not a bad character in Disadvantage, isn't a bad one. But it's Peach Advantage that he has to worry about. He's good in like global disadvantage, uh, but if his opponent is right on top of him, he doesn't really have great combo. He doesn't, oh. but he does have a nair up smash. Ooh. Oh, just doing a great job. That's one thing. Those like high mid percents against Greninja are so scary because he has so many ways of leading to that up smash. Just a kill move. It can be so difficult to just play the neutral without dying. And oh, down tilt. He has Nair. I forgot Nair up smash was even a thing. But here we go. Trying to get this edge guard ended that, early. That didn't hit. I'm actually surprised. That might have been a little Z axis nonsense. Was he? Was it because he was intangible? There's He's a little bit of intangibility on oh. counter, right? Oh. It he tried to murder this man. <laughs> that was actually really smart from player four. He went down to the ground, did not throw out an aerial, and that's why he had enough time to down tilt before actually, the forward smash came out. No, he actually um, threw out a nair. Oh, that's right. Oh, switch. switch so Jay had the correct read. Like, yeah, oh. Jay Grant, he was too, uh, you were correct, and he actually was too slow on the, um, like, on the delayed a little bit for that F smash. And, I really like this from player four. He has the stitch in hand, but it's not the stitch itself that he's using to his advantage. Instead, it's the fear of it. He's landing all these other moves as a result. But he's, he's down an entire great, stock. And right? he's also in a very bad situation right now. Greninja in advantage. He's sitting on the ledge. I mean, oh, Jay likes to play. Bait the option and come in with a hard and hitting aerial. Yeah, no, that was fantastic with the double jump, but also the fact that Peach's shield was so tiny is what made that forder almost guaranteed. It's like a lot of Greninja's aerials, min minus back air and up air, do a lot of shield damage. Well, when I say a lot, it's not like the one he's using the most. Forward air. Forward air does pretty good shield damage. Yeah, well, that's the move that. That's the aerial. That's the aerial right there. Back air, he just pokes, it's like, you're gonna jump out of shield? No? Okay, here's the back air. Safe. Well, not always safe, but still. I really like that fade back from player four. You saw he went to the side, he then immediately drift back in order to not get caught, but down air out of disadvantage is what takes it. That's not really how player four wants to be taken. Not at all, but stops. it's kind of a little bit of a breast of fret there. Finally able to get something on the board, at least. Now he's to find a way to get out of this corner versus this frog. The toxic girl combo starting. Never mind. Oh, the micro spacing is coming out, but instead, both of these players are just barely whipping each other. But Jake Run, he's always seems to be the one who manages to get that first initial hit. And even when player four gets an initial hit, it doesn't necessarily lead to that much all the time. It's like he's chipping away at it. Oh no. That was so slick. That was so that smart. That was so good. Turning around with the water shuriken and then coming in with the back air. Bring that ass all the way over there, boy. Yeah, I honestly feels like one of the reasons why that match was so decisively in uh, Jake Grunt's favor was the offstage play, and specifically how he would constantly get back here, back here. All sorts of damage, just keeping player four out there to the point where the percent just racked up, and then at those middling percents, oh, they're up smash. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't even just like, you know, all these back, it was the way, to, it's also the way back air works too. The one back air from like, maybe like close to the ledge is dragging him so far off stage, and it leads to another back air too. So it could be like one little neutral inter interaction that he loses. He finds himself off stage almost every single time. Yeah, yeah. And I think that one thing about that match is that we kind of saw that Peach doesn't have a fantastic way of dealing with Greninja when he goes to that full hop diagonally in front of her. You know? And that, that is, is exactly where he wants to be in order to go for forward air, in order to land with neutral air, that sort of thing. So I'm really curious to see how Player 4 is going to adapt and try and maybe try and fade back and micro space around it. But beyond that, I don't really feel like Peach has, a, she doesn't have really a fast double jump. She can't really all. go up there and try and contest that easily. She can go from like air to ground fast, but overall movement, she's not very quick at all against this kind of character, this actual ninja. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving, like, moving and grooving. Ooh, okay, good 
Like uh, that was kind of an early side B from Player 4. Gets him back on stage, but he's yet to actually touch Jay Grunt. Oh. He tried to end his stock so early, but Player 4 is finding himself back in disadvantage. Not getting many opportunities <laughs> to play this game. What the hell was that? Okay. <laughs> Every s okay, now now we actually have some solid player four damage. But until that point, the three hits of Uppy were the only damage he had done that stock. <laughs> so it, that's all. That's all was looking like all day grunts, man. It's like he put it in like re reserve, pre-ordered at the GameStop, and everything. Yeah. Oh, cute little footstool there. And one thing is you'll notice player four is going for a lot of these like. Oh, what? The air dodge just and in time. That and one killed him before 100%. He was extremely low percent, but he got the sweet spot, which is, I think, around the wrist of just up smash. Jesus Christ. Oh. So now we got player four in the lead. I'm wondering how he's going to play this, play this against Greninja. Yeah, I, I definitely think that player. Oh, I was about to say, I think that player four can feel comfortable playing more defensively. That's what we're uh, that's not what we're seeing. Uh, that's that's kind of what we're seeing. Uh, uh, he he kind of went in for the forwarder on the ledge right there. But yeah, the he had stage positioning, so it makes sense why. Yeah, that shield. That's the thing is that he eats like, for, like he's able to shield all of these moves. They're too safe for him to actually do anything. And then the shield gets so tiny that that, that a forwarder like that is pretty much. He has to like angle his shield up, and even then he doesn't get any advantage. I like that actually. That was throwing super the smart. Turn up, throwing turnips up might actually be a really good way to shut down that or that vertical movement from Jay Grunt. Yeah, the one thing I see Greninja just loves to do that down to hitting from the ledge. Beautiful timing, love it. But um, shutting down the uh, the hops that Greninja likes to do, all these cross ups in his safe aerials. Ooh, almost saw some big damage coming in. Yeah, yeah, and you saw right there the use of up air. That's something we hadn't really seen from Player Four yet. Just to try and catch a landing when he's willingly putting himself in the air. Uh huh. That was awful. And we're kind of seeing a bit of a reverse situation from Game One, where Player Four now has this massive lead, and Jay Grunt struggling to stay in it here. Oh, as he platforms and just him be able to get the lead first, a really just like. Sealed deal for him, yeah, I guess. You and say. he no longer has a uh, float available. Uh, now, now he does. So, even if he gets put off stage, it's going to be pretty tricky for uh, Jay Grunt to really, you know, find a way to actually end this stock again with dash attack. Wonderful it's idea from both of them too. They both, have, they both have the right idea. So, like, you know, Jay with the payback fair. Ooh, no punish on the up smash. Well, no big punish. Yeah, that up smash worked out very well before, but that time around, Jay Grunt was wise to it and shielded. The thing is, he needs to find a way to close out this stock immediately, already at 107. Even if he does manage to kill player four right here, he's it's going to be really tricky for him. <laughs> oh, oh, the team bag? I mean, like, that's gonna, and he died for it. Yeah. Well, he didn't die for that, but I understand that. Actually, I like the team bag. It basically is telling him, I have the lead. You have to approach. Yeah. Come over here. You cannot play defensive the whole game. Of course, then again, he approached immediately after doing that. So <laughs> I, oh, boy. Oh, I don't think he... Okay, there. now no more jump. And there it is, into the back air! Great disadvantage play from Player 4 that game also. Like, compare it to Game 1 where he was put off stage and it's just like... It was kind of all Jay Grunt. Just like... Every every single time. Yeah. It's like, like, Game 1, he was like the little... The little... Uh, frail oh, Corgi or whatever. This frail Shiba. <laughs> like, no, please don't, don't keep hitting me. me. And then Game 2, he's the swole one. He's like, I just dare you. Come close to me. I have dare. One thing that off stage is actually advantage. One thing that I say helped out player for a lot in that match was having room to land. So those platforms added another layer of spots to land. You saw on FG, there was nowhere for him to go. Yeah. And Greninja's I'm all over you, covering I, landings. I, I'm that. a little bit skeptical of that initial pick to FD in game one. I feel like that's normally a lot of uh, that's a stage that likes to get banned against Greninja, as we saw. Like we saw the reasons why for it. Um, yeah. We did. As we move into this next game, I think that another part is that game one. Jay Grunt took the first stock, and then it was really difficult. And game two, the opposite happened. That really clutch up smash actually got the comeback in that, you know. Uh, player four was down a lot in the first stock. So as we move into this game three, I definitely think the first minute, minute and a half of this game are going to be extremely determinative. Because whoever takes the first stock, uh, if you lose the first stock, the big thing is you lose all the rage. And it's already so difficult for both these characters to find those kills. So... Losing that extra little bit of uh, oomph is just, it can really matter quite a bit. Yes, it can. Plus, you got uh, both these characters have very explosive, like, killing moves. Yeah. Oh, more Peach than Greninja. Greninja really just got four there. Peach got Bacchus. He got four there. Sometimes with Desert Side B. 
turnip is pretty explosive because it just leads to all. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is the end all be all. Ooh, Ooh what a down air! Down it's a back air. You are nuts! And it's another back air. Now we've seen a change this way. We saw game one. Oh, okay, if that Hydro Pump had connected, it would have been an absolute disaster for player four. But as it stands, things are not. They're not looking great for him, but he's starting to be able to make it back to ledge. He's still in He's still in this game. Not out of here yet. He has raids on the table, and something can be done. A club up, club up smash. Oh! He what got the down to but didn't get the follow-up. Now this might be bad. He's the one trapped at the ledge here. Oh, that was sick! <laughs> Yo, falling Man. back here. Down to, it's in a forward air. There, there is so much reversals happening at the ledge here. Like... How many stocks the set have been taken in that way? This is definitely, and now we're gonna see whether my own prophecy holds true. What a tech! Ooh, that tech was godlike. And Jaguar coming back, swinging from disadvantage, still keeping his positioning. And now here we go, back to the frog hops, back to the newts. Yeah, and that's a dash attack, might lead to massive damage here. Up air, up air, up air. Another up air too. And another one with the backer catching that aerial on landing. I, lo I love the positioning coming from the Hydro Pump. Puts himself in the right of perfect spot. The cat's roll distance, and, but just like cover all these options with one jump. The immediate backer sends him off stage. Yeah, back throw, is that? No, oh, what a beautiful mash. I yeah. Think the thing is that he needed as much damage as he could from those pummels. He's dead. He doesn't know the down to forward and not killing just yet, but he's off stage again. And he jumps just right over the dash the attack. Wait, he knew he saw it coming. My man's has the observation of hockey. He sees the future. <laughs> he is moving all over the place right now. Okay, great okay, job. Okay, okay, relax. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like maybe, I don't know what could have killed in that instance. Maybe just run up, up smash, but. Up I feel like dash attack, if it did connect. Did it connect there? It connected, yes. Okay. It just didn't kill. Trying to grab Greninja's low lag aerials is something that everyone thinks they can do. But those, particularly Nair, is deceptively safe. Oh yeah, I don't even, <laughs> I should look up how, how minus it is. It's borderline plus, it's, it's kind of gross. <laughs> it joins Mega Man Downer being one of the few plus moves in the game. If it is though, that's disgusting. Wonderful forward and taking that sock clean off the ledge. It's like it's scraping a paint job off of a car. Shink. Oh. Hey, and honestly, yeah, player four was down by quite a bit in this game. Starting to make it back, though. If he's able to take out the stock from Jake Run, that makes things entirely even. Oh, but finally getting back on stage. We've already seen that a single tiniest of hits at this. What, what an it upbeat! Do? Okay, I actually love this. He recognized just how much of a problem it was dealing with those higher, like, just full hops from Greninja. And he's breaking out the creative parts of his toolkit to deal with it. Yes, he can. An upbeat. That's it. If I actually think that might have killed. Did it last? It connected all the way. If he, if he lands on a platform, that oh, might just the kill. Final, the final hit doesn't really kill from oh. that upbeat. Uh, sometimes if you don't get the final hit, it does kill, but it's weird. Uh, it's like the, the, like the, just like the, I don't know how to call it, like the hit stun. So for both hits to connect, that type of nonsense. Sort of. It's just in order, they like pro. I believe they still, this is still the case. They programmed it in order to make sure that the moves connected one to the next. Uh, they, they gave the, like, the initial hits. Uh, right, lots of very high knockback. Same knockback. I remember those, the reverse up B stuff from Smash 4. God, we played that game. Anyways, that's like back here. Turnip is in his play. Can he make a ledge trap with it? Ah, it despawned. Wait, wait, it just despawned? It, it does that? I guess they've been out for too long, yeah. Can you imagine if turnips didn't despawn, dude? Jesus Christ. All right. I mean, I feel like he just waits till like, he throws it away. I don't know what acting like Mega Man Metal Blade. Oh, no. Okay, this is actually be really big, possibly. Oh, the platform being right above actually really hurt Player 4's combo chances right there. And now things are getting really dicey. Once again, the shield is very small, and I like that. Recognizing that once the shield gets small... What a that parry! Up. That's massive. 93% on Jake Run. He's trapped at the ledge. This could be the death of him. A what great job roll, catching the roll. Four, suddenly in this lead, and it is crazy. Jake Run kept going with his one simple game plan. Catch him, trying to catch him, popping out of shield with these down tilts. Uh, but it's just right forward, just no shade resilient. And now look at him having a lead, taking the lead from Jay Grunt, and now Jay Grunt is the one scared right now. Oh, we're finally back to neutral here. The pressure, that up smash was so hungry. I think that's going to do it, though. Yeah, the down tilt, the forward air. Drive. All of that. He's been looking for that down tilt. 
right before Player 4 made the comeback, and he just 